safeguarding a Jewish majority even at the expense of human rights. What does it even mean in Israel? And has the country gone too far? Nationalistic, discriminatory, two of the ways that critics have described Israel's proposed new bill to legally define Israel as a Jewish nation state. Will the Knesset be able to push it through? The Jewish nation state, an idea that has been on the table for decades. But could it become enshrined in Israeli law, marking a return by Netanyahu's right-wing government to Zionism? And can Israel maintain its religious Jewish identity without being racist? The nation-state bill has existed in various forms for a number of years, but it's not merely symbolic. If passed, it would have something like constitutional standing, the right-wing government is pushing it through. Supported by Israel's Justice Minister Ayelet Shaked, a member of the far-right Jewish Home Party, who said in a speech there is place to maintain a Jewish majority even at the price of violation of rights. But advocacy groups say it is undemocratic and will discriminate against non-Jewish citizens, further reducing the rights of a large Arab-Israeli minority who are already treated as second-class citizens. The bill seeks to enshrine various Jewish elements in Israel's basic laws. It calls for Hebrew to be the official language of the state, even though Arabic is the mother tongue of approximately 1.7 million Palestinian citizens living there. It states that the right of national self-determination in the state of Israel is unique to the Jewish people, undermining the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights which states all peoples have the right to self-determination. Diaspora Jews are also protected. The bill gives every Jew the right to immigrate to Israel. Israeli authorities have just approved 3,000 new units for settlers, mostly on land considered occupied territory under international law. Israel promotes itself as the Middle East's only democracy but prioritizes its Jewish citizens in law. Can a country that acknowledges the rights of only a portion of its population be truly democratic? With me via Skype from Detroit, where it's early morning, we have Huweda Araf, Palestinian-American activist and lawyer who co-founded the International Solidarity Movement, which focuses on supporting Palestinians in the Israeli-Palestine conflict. Also via Skype, this time Tel Aviv, we Welcome Yossi Melman, Israeli writer and journalist who specializes in security affairs. And in the studio, Michael Daventry, journalist for the Jewish Chronicle and Ben White, journalist and author of Cracks in the Wall Beyond Apartheid in Palestine Stroke Israel. Thank you all very much indeed. Michael, let me come to you first of all. Uh, why in any way will this make the situation any better? Uh, there's no guarantee that it will. Um, I, I cannot say for sure that things will be better as a result of this law, but uh, I mean, speaking as the foreign editor of the Jewish Chronicle, I'm not sure it's necessarily my place to. Uh, this is a but law you observe affairs do, in Israel. This, this, is, this is a law proposed by a very right-wing government in Israel, uh, and it doesn't have the support of all of Israelis, let alone all of Jews. So um, there's, I, I can't say for sure that it will work. Okay, so what's the logic behind it? Well, the logic behind it is that, uh, that there is clear electoral mathematics behind this. Um, the government led by Benjamin Netanyahu is one of the most right-wing governments that we've seen in recent history. Uh, he wants to solidify that base against uh, quite a lot of, for instance, corruption allegations that are against him and a very likely election this year. And this is the kind of thing that works well electorally for, uh, for the right-wing base in, in Israeli politics. Whether or not it will uh, work in terms of the Israeli palace Palestinian peace process is another question entirely. The answer is probably no. Looking at it cynically, Ben, if it is simply de being done for political reasons, um, who's going to suffer because of this? Well, uh, the Palestinians who are Israeli citizens will suffer because of this, um, but they've also been 
suffering as a result of Israel's long-standing identity as a quote-unquote Jewish state uh, since 1948. Um, so it's important to remember that the new legislation uh, you know, actually follows on after decades of uh, systematic discrimination in land ownership, housing, culture, education, citizenship rights, and so forth. Uh, I think the law is, or the pending law, is instructive in that, according to the latest draft, uh, it defines the, the, it says that within the State of Israel, the right to national self-determination is unique or reserved only for Jews. Uh, and note that's not Israeli self-determination, it's Jewish self-determination. Uh, and obviously that, that looks to cement the long-standing discrimination faced by Palestinian citizens of Israel. Yeah, expelled in 1948, they, ha they have no right of return. Yeah, so but they so, don't anyway, do they? Yeah, so so the, the the identity of Israel as a Jewish state obviously impacts mm. on the Palestinian refugees and their inability to return, but it also impacts on the one in five, more or less, of Israel's citizens who are Palestinian. Y Yossi, let me ask you this. I mean, it, there is no right of return for Palestinian refugees enshrined in um, Israeli law. We're going to see uh, the right of Jews to go to Israel as part of this bill. I mean, I'm sort of left thinking, and I wonder if other people are, yeah, Nothing's changed. So what do you think is, is changing here? Nothing has changed. Nothing will change on the ground. It's just a declaratory symbolic law, which is superfluous. Um, even within the right wing Likud uh, party, which is the ruling party, there are voices against this law. It's purely political. Among the critics of the law is the uh, a member of parliament, the son of the of the former prime minister, the la late prime minister Menachem Begin, who was probably more right wingish than uh, than Benjamin Netanyahu. This law is just for political reasons, and it's uh, it's to solidify the the base of uh, Netanyahu and his supporters. And above all, it's part of the ongoing assault by this right wing government on various Israeli institutions, including the judiciary and uh, the police because of the corruption charges against the prime minister. So we are in a, on a very slippery down, uh, down the hill uh, kind of trend. And I don't know when, when, where it's going to stop. But practically, it doesn't change the reality. You see, I'm looking at some quotes from the Justice Minister. And, uh, Hueda, I'll come to you in just a moment, if I may. And you can both respond to this. Israel's Justice Minister saying, yeah, OK, we, we're going to do this, even if it is at the expense of human rights. Now, what sort of license does that give them? Yossi, finish first, if you would. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly the part of the trend which I described. There is an assault on institutions, on civil rights organizations. Uh, there are efforts to boycott those who are boycotting or don't boycott Israel. Um, Israel is... is uh, expanding restrictions on uh, tourists to Israel, uh, whom the, the government uh, don't like. So, uh, yes, they, 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 the, the, minister, the, the Minister of Justice, who is a member of even a more right-wing element of the right-wing uh, coalition, uh, Ayele Chaked, she's uh, behind, the, behind this trend, and she will continue. Uh, it's so simple, and, and they are basically uh, turning one sector of the population against the other Jews, against secular Jews, against Orthodox Jews, uh, left-wingers against right-wingers, and Jews against Israeli Arabs and Palestinians. Hawaita, I, I know you, you, you won't like what, you, what you've heard about this, this, this bill, but what are your, your main concerns? Well, I agree, actually, with Ben in that this is nothing new. It's part of a, Israel's longstanding policy. It's been ongoing for decades, and this is just an attempt to legislate what Israel has been declaring and what has been demanding of Palestinians and the international community for decades, and that it is recognized as a Jewish state and the home of the Jewish people. I actually don't agree that this is a game by Netanyahu, an attempt to deflect from what's going on with him personally and the charges against him. It, it might be now in the fervor that is current, but this is not a new bill. It has been debated. It was introduced years ago. And it is, again, something that only legislates what most of the Israeli population, the Jewish Israeli population, believes in that Israel is the national home of the Jewish people, and that Israel should be recognized globally as a Jewish state, which just relegates Palestinians to second and third class citizenship. The 
Palestinian citizens of Israel, but this is what has been happening to us, and we are a subject, and we have been suffering from a countless laws that discriminate against us. I, I say us because I am a, a Palestinian citizen of Israel, because we are not Jewish. Turning one section of society against the other, Hueda, do, do you think that's likely with this? It's, an, it, it's something that's already been happening. I mean, you take a poll of Jewish-Israeli society, and it, it largely discriminates uh, against its Palestinian citizens and does not see its Palestinian Arab citizens as equal. Sure, they will say, um, you know, politically that we deserve certain rights, but not at the expense of the Jewish character of the state. And, you know, with in terms of uh, Minister Ayelet Shaked's recent comments, this is also nothing new. In 2012, the Israeli high court, uh, in actually um, confirming Israel's entry into Israel law uh, or citizenship law that bans Palestinians citizens of Israel from bringing their spouses who are might be from the West Bank and Gaza or from other countries in to live with them, the then president of the court actually said that human rights are not a prescription for national suicide. What does national suicide mean? Increasing the population of Palestinian citizens of Israel. And so this is the president of the Israeli high court back in 2012. So these kinds of sentiments are not new. Michael, I mean, it's very difficult to know whether I should talk to you as a representative of the Jewish Chronicle, which has an editorial position, or, or as a, um, you know, a Jewish person yourself. But let me just put this question, and you can define how you want, want to answer it. Um, I, I don't think anybody would deny that under the Israeli system at the moment, many Palestinians are being treated um, in a different way, that they are perhaps second-class mm. citizens. But this makes them third-class citizens, perhaps, or fourth-class citizens, and almost an irrelevance. Well, I mean, let's cut to the chase. Uh, I mean, uh, she, she was absolutely right. What, we've, what we're talking about here is a bill that is nothing new. It's been on the books. I think it was proposed by Kadima back in 2011. Yeah, but it's going to become so, law rather than well, yes, a possibility. Possibly. Anything can happen in, in the Knesset. But we're not talking really about that. We're talking about... Uh, there, there are two strands to this. Firstly, is or is not Israel a Jewish state? And secondly, what impact does that have on the Palestinians, who are also residents in the area, and they live there, and they have... Um, undergone incredible hardships and oppression and and occupation uh, as have the and there has also been sufferings on the other side the first point is that it's very clear that israel is a jewish state look at its flag look at its coat of arms look at who is the president look at its main politicians uh, there's there's no question that there was always back even back in the 1940s when the state first came to being that there was an aim of creating a country for jewish people however uh, there's also the very clear reality that now, almost 70 years after that day, that um, there's a very real demographic threat there. And if Israel goes on as it is... Why is it to a threat? Why is it, why is well, it, uh, why is it not just simply a demographic change? If, why do you label it a threat? In, in the way that if Israelis want to consider themselves to be an exclusively Jewish state, as many Israelis do, then it will be a position where, um, uh, where, where the number of Jews in the country will be markedly smaller than the number of Palestinians in the country. That is, in some Israelis' views, not the kind of country that they want to have. Yeah. That's not my personal view. No, no, no. I'm not, I, I this, this is why I'm asking whether well, you exactly. define it. So this is the point. And also... As You're just giving context. Well, yes, but also beyond that, it's also the view of many people who read the Jewish Chronicle, British Jews, who do identify with Israel and believe that it should exist as a country. It's very important to them. They pray every Saturday for the safeguarding of Jerusalem. But uh, they also worry about what Israel does in, in, the, in the region as well. So from that point of view, it isn't a clear-cut question of let's have an exclusively Jewish state and let's have exclusively a Palestinian state. But do, do you go back to the original question I asked you, which is do you feel that um, the Palestinians, as you say, they've, they've had a rough deal in many ways, that they were second-class citizens. Do you think this is relegating them even further uh, down the ladder, that they are third, fourth, fifth now? Uh, I think it's... Uh, I, I don't see this it change personal. their status, uh, but I also think that it isn't... Uh, I, I think they've got a terrible deal, the Palestinians. Yeah. Things are very difficult for them. It isn't... It is... A lot of it is down to Israel and to the occupation in the West Bank. A lot of it is also down to the fact that they've been abandoned by countries like Saudi Arabia, by Jordan to a certain extent. Yeah. If I could just jump... Yeah, can I just say to the two on Skype, to Hossi, uh, Yossi and Hueda, do feel free to jump in 
uh, when you hear anything you like. I, I will see that you're sort of waving your hand or, or nodding or whatever. Uh, feel free to say whatever you like, but we'll go to Ben now. Yeah, no, I just, I just wanted to come back to a theme that's cropped up in this, in this discussion about to what extent this, this new draft legislation is new or reflects long-standing trends. Um, the the self-proclaimed identity of the State of Israel as a Jewish state, uh, as I mentioned, has, has always had a discrim discriminatory impact on Palestinian citizens of Israel. For example, for the first two decades or so, uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel are actually subject to martial law um, up until 1966. Uh, and the discrimination they face, as Hoeda mentioned, impacts on family life and, uh, and so forth. I think one factor in why this kind of legislation has come about, apart from the fact that the current coalition government is right-wing, is actually, I think, it's a pushback against efforts by Palestinian citizens of Israel over the last one or two decades who have mobilized to demand equality, uh, who have asserted their national identity as Palestinians, uh, and who have, for example, a decade ago in a series of documents by various representative bodies, um, insisted that Israel be a state of all its citizens, which it, which it is currently not. Yossi, did you want to say something or were you just moving around? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do want to say something. I think that, well, first of all, this law is unneeded. It's part of the general attempt by the government uh, in other areas. But thirdly, when we talk about the Palestinians, uh, the impression which is emerging is that we are talking about one people. There are Palestinians under occupation in the West Bank. There are Palestinians under another occupation, which is Hamas occupation in Gaza, and Israel left Gaza. And if there is a siege around Gaza, it's mainly by Egypt, not by Israel. Israel is providing food, the basic necessity. Uh, but, no, that is just is not true. As an, uh, just for the Gazan true, people. And, and then, uh, if I may finish, uh, and then there are Israeli Arabs. They are equal by the law. The, it's within the Israeli Declaration of Independence that their rights have to be uh, guaranteed. And, so and will, they, sense, will, will they be equal under the law in the future with this, this bill? Are people misreading it, yes. perhaps? Yes, yes, it won't in, change in, in, in what way? Because the, the, Israel is defining itself as a Jewish state, for good or bad. That's, that's the nature of the definition. But Israel does recognize that the Israeli, Arab, uh, Israeli Arabs are equal citizens in, in the same state. And, and the, but like you see, the, the point is, the, 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 the Justice Minister, she has said, at the expense, perhaps, of, of human rights. And she obviously has something in mind. That would not mean that Palestinians <laughs> were being treated equally under the law. No, she's, refer she's referring more to Jewish human rights group than, groups than with the Arab human rights group. OK. OK. Hawede, okay. you wanted to jump in. Okay. Yossi kept talking, quite rightly, but you got your chance now. Yeah. It, just a few things, and I know this is not a discussion about Gaza, but what Yossi was saying about Gaza is absolutely not true, and it's recognized by the entire international human rights and humanitarian law community that Gaza is still occupied. Okay, you, both, ma you both made your point on that one, and you're quite right. It is not about Gaza, so let's carry now, on. Okay, now it, uh, a few other things. Uh, also, I, I need to state with uh, Yossi, and I don't know if this is deliberate or not, but calling us Israeli Arabs, that is not what we should be called. That has been an attempt by the state to separate us from our Palestinian brethren in the occupied territories and that are refugees. We are Palestinians and we are Palestinian citizens only. We are not Israeli because Israel doesn't have a, a, a nationhood. There's no Israeli nation that I can belong to. And that is of course a result there of is. Israeli. Of state. course there is. There is a state of Israel. <laughs> and you live of... in the state of Israel. I have you are citizens. free to travel and wherever you go, but if you live in America, you are a citizen of America. No, I do not have the same national rights as you. That is not true. And by defining Israel as a Jewish state, that means that I, not a Jewish, not not being Jewish, will not have the same rights. And but let's go back to Israel's founding father, David Ben Gurion, who said famously two quotes. He said one: that in order for Israel to be a viable Jewish state, it needs to maintain an eighty. 20 percent, uh, 80 percent Jewish, 20 percent, no more than 20 percent Palestinian Arabs in the state. And that has been 
the basis of legislation. I'd actually just like to pick up very quickly on a couple of comments that Yossi has made, which I think are actually quite misleading to the viewers. Um, in fact, uh, the right to equality is not enshrined in Israeli law in many sectors of life, as testified, for example, by the Association for Civil Rights in Israel. Israel's Declaration of Independence, which doesn't actually define Israel as a democracy, um, but in numerous Israeli Supreme Court rulings, the so-called Declaration of Independence does not have the weight or constitutional weight that Yossi seemed to be implying that it has and that others imply it has. Uh, and in fact, uh, based on, for example, the basic law of human dignity and liberty, which was pretty late into the game in the 90s, but under that law, uh, there is an important caveat within it that says the rights of citizens can be violated in order to maintain the values of Israel as a so-called Jewish and democratic state. And that has always been interpreted by the Israeli Supreme Court as allowing for a violation of Palestinian citizens' rights in order to achieve and protect the so-called greater good of protecting Israel as a Jewish state. So it's not accurate to portray Palestinian citizens of Israel as having always enjoyed some kind of equality. Um, what Hawaida has rightly I pointed out, so I, uh, I if you just let me finish, Yossi, as well. What Hawaida has rightly pointed out is that what's not... Just, just, uh, you'll get your chance in a minute, Yossi. What Hawaida has rightly pointed out is that actually this systematic discrimination, which is shot through Israeli law and policy, is not going to be substantially altered by this new law. This new law cements what has already existed. OK. Yossi, Yossi, I'm going to come to Michael in just a moment, but very quickly, if you wouldn't mind. Well, I didn't say that the Israeli Arabs are not discriminated against. They are, but not in the eyes of the law and not in the uh, uh, Declaration of Independence and the very basic problem of Israelis... But there's that dozens of discrimination laws. ...that we don't have a constitution. We just have laws, basic laws and laws. That's the problem. In the eyes of the and law, we're discriminated against. Michael, cannot, Michael is sitting here, and every time he wants to open his mouth or I come to ask him a question, unfortunately, or fortunately, because it's quite a lively discussion, and we're pleased for that, uh, somebody else says something else. There's, there's, you want to say what you need to say, and then I'm going to ask you to respond to this. Is, is this entirely symbolic, and is it just typical of uh, what Netanyahu might want to do, A, to appease his right wing, and secondly, ahead of a visit by the US president. There's a, there's a phrase in Turkish which won't translate hugely well, but it's, it's basically referring to children who have stones in their, in their skirts and they sort of upend it and all the stones go everywhere, and that is the Israeli-Palestinian discussion, because you go in from, uh, for instance, we're talking about a point of law, a bill that may become law, and then you end up talking about 1948, and then you talk about Gaza, and there are just so many different perspectives. I just wanted to make an observation which is not directly connected to what uh, uh, all the other panellists have been talking about. But is I think this it's another one of these one. stones you were going to say? It is actually another one of these stones. But the point is that Israel nowadays, looking from, it's from a Jewish perspective, looking from Britain, Israel is a country that is wrestling with, a, with an identity crisis. This isn't just as blatant as, is it a Jewish state or not, even though that's a very important question. It's about what kind of a country it wants to be going forward. And that is captured by a story that our paper's been covering quite extensively, which is uh, the migrant crisis, the non-Palestinian migrant crisis, uh, in terms of the tens of thousands of African migrants who are at the moment subject to deportation to Rwanda from Israel. Uh, because they are illegal, they crossed over the border from Sinai, they're looking for work, the Israeli government doesn't want them there and wants to send them back. The same policy isn't Are being, they Jewish? Is, oh, they're not. No. But the same policy isn't being applied to, um, to migrants from Ukraine and Russia, who are equally illegal under the state of law, but because they're Jewish, they don't always have... They're not always subject to the same order. So there is a... Um, uh, this is an ongoing debate in Israeli society, and I think the point that Yossi made abstractly, but it's yeah. still important, is that Israel is a society where you can debate this. Uh, there are other countries in the region where you can't. Do you recognise your country, Yossi, as, as being sort of mildly schizophrenic? Well, the country is highly divided, and it's nothing true. It's divided. The Jewish population is divided. There are divisions between Israeli... Arabs and Israeli Jews, there are divisions within the Arab minority in Israel. I, I know a lot of voices in the Arab minority who are very unhappy about their uh, representation in the, in, the, in the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, and they feel they are not represented by their, uh, by their members of parliament, but actually they represent the Palestinians under Israeli occupation. So Israel is, yes, it's schizophrenic, and it has to go with what Michael has just said. Israel has been from day one, from the day it declared its independence, 
in, in an identity crisis. That's very simple, and we haven't solved it after 70 years. Um, Hueda, just very quickly, because we only have about another 40 seconds to, to go. Y your take on where this is going to leave the country and the people of your, well, of Israel? Well, listen, uh, the Palestinian members of the Israeli parliament uh, presented a counter bill to this, which says that Israel should be a country of all of its citizens. It, its national symbols should represent also the Palestinian citizens so that it could be more of an equal society. And this is flatly rejected by the, the majority of the Jewish members of parliament who actually said that these Palestinian members of parliament should resign or should go represent uh, the people of Gaza. It is this, just by asking for equal rights uh, and equal representation in this country. Supposedly, we are mm. traitors. And this is the environment that we are dealing with. Okay. And so it's difficult going forward. Everybody, look, we have to leave it there. I mean, there, as, as we found, we strayed into different areas of um, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict over the last 70 years or so. No doubt we would, no matter what we were discussing. But to describe the country as mildly schizophrenic or sort of in search of its own identity, as a couple of our guests did, I think was a very interesting point. Uh, you've been watching Roundtable. I'm David Foster from me and my guests. Thank you very much for watching. We do hope to have your company next time. Goodbye for now.